Are you blessed? Are you thankful for the Holy Spirit? Are you thankful for Jesus? Are you thankful for the cross? Are you thankful that he resurrected? Are you thankful that he paid for your sins? I, I, I really, listen, uh, I, I don't know if I'm strange. <laughs> but I can't help but go all out for the one who went all out for me. Uh, I owe him everything. I remember when I, when I was uh, in my house uh, serving God, not as a pastor, and looking at, at everything that was in my house and realized I did not supply my wife any of these things except for that lazy boy, and that was mine. <laughs> God had supplied it all. I, I couldn't. I couldn't. Matter of fact, when he told us, uh, sell everything. We want to hold on to our garbage. I sold everything. God replaced everything. Now, don't go home and sell everything. God told me to go to sell everything. Okay? So, so let God tell you what to do. But, but uh, he, he, he put everything in, and I could have never purchased all that stuff. Uh, I was... I was limited in my income, but God was not limited in his. Amen. Drew, I know you're out there just trying to, to empower us to prosper. And uh, we'll never see God's miraculous power until we give him first place. Amen. Never. Amen? Amen? We're going through Proverbs chapter 1. Praise God for Proverbs chapter 1. And uh, we read uh, chapter 1 in the King James, and then we went into the KWD version. We'll, we'll get that at the end. Father, thank you for your presence. And uh, just open up our hearts, our minds, and our thoughts in Jesus' name. Uh, we're going to read verses 1 and 2 now in the King James version. Let's read that together as they throw it up on the screen. Are you ready to read it? Let's read. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Period. Right? <laughs> Semicolon. Now, just look at that for a minute. To know wisdom and instruction... And you could almost say, so that we can perceive the words with understanding. I want to talk, touch on wisdom this morning. Wisdom and instruction, if we may. Because wisdom comes from God. If you lack wisdom, we know the Bible says in James 1, you can ask for wisdom. And don't you know that we all need wisdom? How many of us have tried it ourselves and it didn't work? <laughs> Could I have some more hands, please? Let's not lie in the presence of God. Uh, wisdom comes from God, and it's only when we get that wisdom that we actually are successful in every area of our lives. Physical, soulish, relational. Amen? Amen. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 16. Are you ready for Ephesians 1 verse 16? Cease, this is Paul, I cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, if Paul prayed that, it must be a good prayer. You can pray this prayer for yourself. God, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Notice that it said the spirit. I, I would capitalize that as if I, if I were writing this. Because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. 
Isn't he? And we need wisdom, don't we? And we want him to, rev to reveal that wisdom to us. And we get it through the knowledge of the scriptures, the knowledge of him, the knowledge of who God is, the knowledge of the word. If anything, I would say that in today's society, what we lack is thirst for God's word. We've satisfied that thirst with so many other things that we've, we've supplanted the need, the thirst for the word of God, the water of the word of God for other things. I, I've used the analogy before that you could quench your thirst with Coke, but you really haven't quenched it. You've masked it because what you really needed was water. Amen? And so you, you quenched it or you masked it through some other means and you lacked what you needed the most, which was good, fresh, clean water. And so we need to be thirsty for God. Yes, and amen. Thank you for your enthusiastic. And, uh, but it is the spirit of wisdom. Now we read to know wisdom. We need to know the Holy Ghost. He is our teacher. He is our helper. He is our comforter. He is our guide. He is our all in all. He is our paraclete. He is the one that teaches us all things. He shows us Jesus Christ. He reveals the word to us. He opens it up. He reveals it. He reveals the reality of what God is trying to say. He is the revealer of wisdom. And the revealer of it. So that we may know him better. Right? So we need to pray. Pray. Holy Spirit. Open my eyes. Give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. In Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. But you when you pray enter into your closet. That doesn't necessarily mean go into a physical closet. Some of you don't have room in your closet. Some of you need to clean out your closet. Some of you need to throw out what's been there for 10 years. It's got dust. You don't know if something's growing inside that, that old shoe. Praise God. But it means separate yourself so that you can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And pray to your father which is in secret. Another pray, pray alone to him. And your father which sees in secret shall reward you openly. He is going to answer your prayers. He's going to move on your behalf, isn't he? But then he said, but when you pray, do not use vain repetitions. Don't, don't repeat the prayer 15 times thinking that if you say it 15 times, then he's going to hear you. No, he's a good father that always hears you immediately. And, and talk in your language, please. Don't get too religious with God. O oh, thou which abideth in the clouds and rideth in the chariots. Don't listen. He, he knows you when you're talking normal. Right? Just speak. Don't get religious on him. He's a father. Amen? And he says, as heathen do, for they think they shall be heard with their much speaking. But you, therefore, are not like them. But then he says this. For your father knows what things you have before you what? Now, doesn't that mean he wants you to ask? But it, does it also mean that he already knows what you need? So we have the reality that, that God, God, my father, I like father. Uh, he, he knows all the past, right? He's here in the present, right? Right? 
He knows the end from the beginning, doesn't he? And he knows what you need here. Right here. Oh, actually, he knows it right here, too. Right? Can you all see that there? Yeah, zoom in. There you go. He knows what you need right here. And he knows also what you need right here. Before you got into your problems and your situations, your trials, he already knew what was coming down the pipe. He, he can see everything. I don't know how he does it. In some sense, women have an inkling because they can carry on forefront conversations at the same time with four different people and not miss a lick of what's happening in the other room. How they do that, I do not know. I've learned that when I'm speaking to someone and I know my wife's in the other room, I whisper. That doesn't work all the time, but she's not here to defend herself. I thought I'd throw that in there before. She... But, but God knows everything, doesn't he? Before you ask. But you see, uh, it's, this is a mystery I, I don't know what I need or how to fix what I need. I don't know the answer of what I need. I don't know how to fix the problem I am. But who does know? Because he knows what you need before you even ask. So ask. I need wisdom. Isn't wisdom what we need? Isn't wisdom the knowledge of what to do? How to fix something? How to get out of a problem? How to correct an error? How to get out of the mess that we made? Is it, don't we need the wisdom? Don't we need the wisdom to know how to pass the test that's coming up at school? Yeah, the wisdom is study. <laughs> then he can reveal to you and remind you what you learned. There's wisdom right there. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Are you with me today? But do we need wisdom? And, and so we can ask for wisdom, and we can ask God, God, there's, I, I'm, in, I'm in a mystery. I know there's an answer, but it's mysterious. It's unknowing to me at this point. I need you to give me that spirit, the Holy Spirit of wisdom, and reveal to me the knowledge of what to do next. He's a good father, and he wants to reveal to you what you need. Don't, you know, one of the hardest things we have to overcome is called pride. I don't need help. That said it all right there. You need more help than what you know you need. And that's a mystery why you think you don't need help when, when everybody else knows you do. <laughs> say, I need help. <laughs> Tell the person, says, you too. <laughs> Now, this is a mystery, right? It's a mystery. I don't know what to do. Okay? Because we're talking about to know wisdom and instruction. And to perceive the words of understanding. 1 Corinthians 2, 7. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Look at that. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom... So obviously, it was a mystery, but he's speaking it, so it's not mystery anymore, right? Which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Now, in this case, which the, he's talking about Jesus and, and the, the uh, crucifixion, which none of these princes of the world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. See, the devils don't know the mystery of God. They didn't know that if... if if they crucified Jesus, they would have lost the battle and the war. They didn't know that. It was, it was a mystery that was not revealed to them. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Do you love God? Amen. Then he's got some things prepared for you that at this point is a mystery to you. He's got plans for good, not evil, 
plans to prosper. He's got methods. He's got abilities. He's got the how-to. But we need his wisdom. I need him to reveal to me what my next step needs to be. Right? So, so uh, if, you, if you love him, then, then though you have not, eyes have not heard, I mean ears, heard. <laughs> Get it out, Kenny. Verse 10. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. So these, they don't have to be mysteries because he can reveal it to us by his spirit. For the spirit search all things, yes, the deep things of God. The Holy Spirit knows the deep things of God and knows his, the plans that God has for us and how we need the help, and he's called the helper, and how he can lead God, teach us what those plans are. For what man, what man knows the things of a man? Save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knows no man but the spirit of God. Now, we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, the Holy Spirit, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. How are they given to you? So, so is it free? F R. But wait, there's more. I'm sorry, I, I got to the Christmas extravaganza. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So we see that there's a mystery. There's a revelation that we need. We need him to reveal to us the wisdom. The understanding, we need to help him, have him help us perceive his words, understand his words, know what my next step is. Don't you think he knows what the next step should be? Amen. If we would just listen to what God says, we could even say this, it might be good to listen what your daddy says, what your pastor says, Amen. what people of faith that have achieved and have reached what they are saying. They, they may have learned something. Uh, remember that if you're doing all the talking in your closet all alone, you're doing all the talking and you know nothing. And we need to be quiet for a minute and hear the one who knows all things <laughs> and, and let him reveal the understanding and the wisdom so that he can tell us what the next thing is. Right? Are y'all with me? Good. Okay. Romans 8, 25. If we hope for that which we do not see, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit helps in our infirmities. Actually, infirmities is not sickness there. It's weakness. Ever say weakness. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. Okay. We're over here. We don't know what to pray for. Why? We don't know what the answer is. If I knew what I needed to pray for, I would pray for it. But I don't know what the answer is uh, other than I know that I need wisdom. And the good prayer is, Father, give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So I know that's a good prayer, but I don't know what to pray for. Because I don't have his wisdom yet. You with me? Likewise, oh, we said, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So the Holy Spirit's interceding. We know that Jesus Christ is at the right hand of the Father interceding. <laughs> it sounds like he's interceding for us to just keep quiet for a minute. Our thick-headedness, our pride... It's too quiet on this side. <laughs> Our ignorance. And, and we just need to say, no, I need help. 
And, and let him begin to reveal to us, since he's interceding, God, let whatever the Holy Spirit knows, download it to me. Right? Because I need to know. I, maybe you're better than me, but I need help. I mean, I have to preach every Sunday. Help. Right? First, wait a minute. Uh, he that searched the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit because he makes a intercession for the saints, for you and me, according to the will of God. Because we know that if we pray according to the will of God, he hears us. And if he hears us, we have the petitions that we ask for him. Well, well if I'm praying, when well, I'm not receiving? Because when you pray, you pray wrong. Sometimes you don't even ask, or sometimes you're just asking for yourself. You're trying to consume it on yourself. And there's contention in your life. And where there's division and contention, there's every evil work. Because <laughs> you're listening to the wrong person. Those on the internet, please pray for me. I feel, I feel like... like 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1. Follow after charity. That's love. Boy, if, if we just did that, we'd be a hundred times better. Desire spiritual gifts. Yes. But rather that you may prophesy. Yeah, that too. Then he says this. He that speaks... In an unknown tongue, speaks not unto men, but unto God, for no man understands him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaks what? Mysteries. There's that word mysteries again. So God did not leave us powerless, but he gave us a method to help us discover the mystery of the answers that we need. And it's called praying in another tongue. In an unknown tongue. If you read that chapter, it says you don't even understand what you're saying. And if anything, you need to pray for God to reveal and, and give you an interpretation of what you're saying. So we believe in the speaking of tongues because Jesus said these signs follow them that believe. They will cast out devils and they will speak with new tongues, other tongues. Now, you may have had a lot of religious teaching on this. Don't get scared. I, I am normal. Uh, but let's understand uh, the realities of what God is saying. Because you see, he wants us to know these mysteries. He wants us to know what we need to do next. He wants us to have communion with the Holy Spirit. You see, when you speak in an unknown tongue, you're not speaking to man, you're speaking to whom? God. Spirit to spirit. And though your mind has no understanding, that doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit doesn't understand because He knows all things. He knows the heart of God. And he is communing with you and trying to download some information for your benefit. Now, is that the only way you can get the wisdom of God? Of course not. You got the word. The word will help you too. And, and so you're not more spiritual if you do. You have just got another method that will increase your capacity to hear and to know what God wants for you. That's why you, why you should be baptized in the power of God's Holy Spirit. It is the door opener to the spiritual gifts. It is the beginning doorway for God to manifest His glory in ways that we had no idea possible. Are you with me? So what we have to do, is, as we said here, it says, uh, Howbeit in the Spirit He speaks mystery. Now, the word mystery in Greek is the word Musterion. That's where we get the word mystery. 
And what the word musterion in the Greek means, hidden things, secret, mystery. It means a hidden or secret thing not obvious to your understanding, to our understanding. It is the, uh, the mystery of God, the secret counsels which govern God in dealing with the righteous, those who are called by his name, which are hidden from the ungodly and wicked men, but plain to the godly. Well, it's plain when you get the mystery solved. It's not plain when you're seeking it. But it is the secret counsels which governs God's dealing with us. And so this opportunity that God has given us is an opportunity to discover the mysteries or the wisdom. I cannot tell you how many times God gave me the download of what to do next by just simply praying in the Holy Ghost and communing with God. Amen. Praying in an unknown tongue. Do you have to do it? No. You get to, but you don't have to. Do you have to get healed? No. You don't have to, but you get to if you want to. Do you have to prosper? No, you don't have to. You can take a vow of poverty if you want to. But I've been poor, as John Osteen, Joel's father said, and I've been, I've been well, not rich, but, but, but enough to have extra, and extra is better. <laughs> better than poor. <laughs> Come on. I mean, peanut butter in a can that bends your spoon is still peanut butter, <laughs> but I like Jiffy. Listen, pork in a can, a silver can, where you boil all the grease out, still satisfies the stomach. <laughs> but pulled pork is a lot tastier. <laughs> Steak is good. <laughs> so, what am I saying? I'm saying the mystery of God's wisdom can be obtained as you pray in the Holy Ghost. You see, I could not deal with my three children the same way. They had different personalities. They had different problems. They had different situations. They had different issues. And what worked for one doesn't quote unquote work for all. It's not a cookie cutter answer. How to deal with your wife is not a cookie cutter answer. How to help your husband is not a cookie cutter answer. But the wisdom of God works in every situation. And when you pray in the Holy Ghost, God in a moment can download the information that you need to overcome the situation that you're in. I'm out of time. So you're just going to have to come back next week. Is all I got to say. I'm going to finish by just saying this. And come back to this next week. Proverbs 1-2. This is the Passion Translation. With these sayings will be found the revelations of wisdom and impartation of spiritual understanding. Use them as keys to unlock the treasures of true knowledge. We're going to unlock the treasures that's inside of you. The treasures of God's wisdom. The treasures of God's purpose. The treasures of God's capacity. The treasures of God's gifts. The treasures that God wants to manifest through your life. The treasure that you have to be able to touch somebody else's life. You have a purpose on this earth. God wants to use you. Listen, I don't care whether you thought you were garbage. And unusable. God is saying, no. I have chosen the foolish thing to confound the wise. 
I've, re- I've called the rejects to be those that show the way and the truth and the life. I have chosen those that the world throws out as non-usable as the one that I want to use because it is my power in you that glorifies my capacity in the power of God's Holy Spirit. You are a child of God. You are called of God. You are empowered by God's Holy Spirit. You are adopted in the beloved. You are loved, accepted, and connected. You are God's chosen. You are the one that God wants to use. You are a vessel that God wants to cause His glory to work through. You are the elbow to someone else's life. You are the answer to someone else's problem. You are the one that God says, I want to use you. Your hands as my hands. Your feet as my feet. Your arms as my arm. My capacity in you to touch the life that's next to you. God wants you to be the friend that touches the other person. He wants you to be the one that reaches down to where they are. Stuck in the miry clay of their situation. And pull them out. Clean them up. He wants you to take the aborted baby that's left out to die. And wash them and receive them. And say you are my brother. You are my sister. You are God's child. I had to get that out. Since the KWD version. I say that jokingly, but let's read this together. Read it. Here are kingdom revelations, words that I live by, and words of wisdom given to empower me to reign in life, written as Proverbs by Israel's Solomon, David's son, King Solomon, sorry. Your Holy Spirit will impart and reveal to me the wisdom and spiritual understanding of your words to unlock the true knowledge of the treasures of my life that you have prepared for me. Amen. Can you stand? We need the Holy Spirit. Listen. Jesus told the apostles, the disciples, go and wait till you be endued with power from on high. If they did miracles before they were endued with power, if they raised dead before they were endued in power, if they having been with Jesus for three years, Jesus said, you still need the Holy Spirit, then let us not think that somehow we are better than the apostles. If they needed the Holy Spirit and God's power, we need the Holy Spirit and God's power. We'll deal with that more. I, I know there's a lot of rotten teaching out there that makes one people want to shy away. It's of the devil. Don't say it's of the devil what's of God. Amen. The Bible says don't call good evil and then turn around and call evil good. Amen. Right? Amen. Let's do what God... Let's just be obedient to God... And say, be endued with power from on high. Yes, Lord. But first you need to be born again. Are you born again? Yes. Do, you, do you know? Oh, that's good. Now, now you're responsive. Praise the Lord. <laughs> do you know you're going to heaven? Yes. If you don't know this morning, you can know by just giving your heart to Jesus. Yes. Listen, soften your heart. Even Christians can get hard-hearted. And you don't sense God's presence anymore. It it isn't the church. It's the pastor. He just doesn't preach as good as he used to. 
No, it's your own heart that's been hardened for whatever reason that may be. You've got to let things go and open up your heart and be receptive. Let God renew the first love that's inside of you. Matter of fact, he, he said to, to the people, he says, go get your first love. See, he didn't change. Our love changed. Our purpose changed. We traded something that really what shouldn't have been traded for. Buy those garments that money can't buy. Only faith can get. If you're here this morning and you need to rededicate your life, or you need to give your life for the first time, I want you just to look in your heart and say, Am I right with God? Because if you're not right with God, God is right with you. He just wants to reach you. He wants to adopt you. He wants to love you. He wants to be the good, good father. But he can't do it without your hand. Without you saying, I want it. Because he can't give you what you don't want. He won't. He will not bite. You can stop God by not wanting what he wants. He wants everybody to be saved. But if some people don't want God, he's, I'm going to respect you. Now, men, we understand respect a, a little better sometimes. Uh, uh, we don't understand love as much as women do, but we understand respect. And God will respect man's decision if you don't want it. Uh, he'll still offer it till the day you die. But, but he's always offering it.